a very good evening to one and all present here watching us yet again on SX YouTube live chat. Let me begin today's session by asking you whether you have ever felt that rumbling deep feeling in your stomach whenever anyone said, let's do maths. Or when anyone said maths is fun, you say, hey, okay, well, and you just take a back seat with maths. Well, let me assure you and promise you, after today, and that's not happening anymore. Simply because today we have with us someone who calls himself the fastest human calculator, Mr. Neelakanta Bani. He's actually a student, so not very old and not very far away from you or the age group of anyone watching us here today. He's an absolute fast wizard who has developed to calculate and crunch numbers at a very young age. He will be taking us through his session and towards the end, there will be some little beautiful surprise waiting for all of you. Oh, and before we begin, and before I hand this over to Mr. Banu, I do hope you have your writing pads and pens with you. So up again, yet another the wonderful guest on the SESL YouTube live platform, Mr. Neelakanta Banu. Mr. Banu, over to you. Thanks a lot, ma'am. Thanks a lot for the introduction. Uh, firstly, I would really uh, want to thank everyone who's invited me, Bajanti, ma'am, Bridget, sir, and everyone in the entire Singhania schools together to actually have me to interact with you guys um, in this lockdown time. So it's a wonderful experience. So I'll actually, um, as ma'am introduced, I'll not go a little deeper into what I do, but I'll actually uh, uh, go ahead and speak to you guys about how I have become the fastest human calculator and what that means and why math is fun and something which is essential. So uh, first of all, greetings everyone. Nice to have you guys here. I am Nilakanta Bhanu Prakash and I am the fastest human calculator in the world. Uh, what that means is that I calculate quicker than the speed of calculator and a lot of other math maestros who have broken records in the past. So let me actually quickly walk you through towards how I have become so. So um, any guesses? How old do you think I am? I am 20. I'm not very far off from where you are right now. I was in my 10th grade six years ago. And I was just someone else who was doing his own set of calculations. So um, let me actually walk you through how I have become what I have become. And then quickly go ahead and show you guys a few cool, cool uh, math feats and stunts. And eventually let's move on to talk about why math is essential and how math can be really, 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 really fun. So, I mean, if you look at me, you would actually know that, right? I'm not that kind of a serious statuary figure right in front of you here, trying to scare you with problems which, which you can't solve. So let's actually run into this uh, story of mine. I was a regular school going kid. I was in my fifth to sixth grade. I was fifth class back in 2007, when I actually figured out that I really, really liked the entire concept of solving puzzles. So that's when my parents realized and they said, Bhano, okay, since you like this, let's see if you want to actually do calculations. So I somehow got myself into the sport of speed calculation. Neither, and let me, let me actually come back and tell you that neither Abacus nor, Abac nor Vedic Math was something which I did. So I started off and I went a little deeper into this. And um, in, fifth, in the sixth grade, when I was in sixth class, I won the regional championship. So after that, there were hours of practice which I invested into the concept of speed math where I was actually taking this up as a sport. And by the end of 10th grade, I was the international speed arithmetic champion. So in my 11th class and 12th class, I went into the same rigor, which I think every one of you here is going in, which is the complicated um, exams which we have, the IIT entrance examinations, the entrance examinations, which all the 10th graders here are giving. So I sort of empathize with where you guys and what your learnings have been since you're, let's say a kid, all the way since your 10th, because I have taken part in very similar um, things. So 
what do I say? So I went on to become the fastest human calculator when I was 15. And this is something which I did by racing past the speed of a calculator in front of everyone. So um, how many of you here actually have heard of the name Shakuntala Devi? Shakuntala Devi is a very popular figure, also known as the human calculator and the human computer. So I broke her record when I was 15. And that's when I started believing in the impossible, saying that I am capable, like everyone else out there, to do things beyond what we actually usually comprehend. So um, a lot of you people here might say Ki math is a little hard. Math is scary. I totally understand. But that's because you have not made friends with it. And that is what I'm here for you guys today to actually talk to you about how to make friendship with numbers, how to make peace with numbers and arithmetic and why it is important to do so. So um, a couple of quick questions to let's say all my uh, little ones and the friends who are let's say here who are uh, around the fifth grade and below. So, so my little Todds who are actually here. Um, do you find arithmetic hard? Do you find it difficult when you actually are asked to do certain questions when word problems sort of kick in the first time you're actually doing things which we have not done before? So just understand that it is normal to actually be put off by the entire concept of mathematics and how it is taught. It's because we have not been innately taught how we should be going about understanding numbers and calculations per se. So um, I started off my journey in understanding how to make peace with numbers. And let me actually give you a short glimpse of how I did it. Um, so um, before I go ahead, as Ma'am has mentioned uh, before, when before we started off, is that I'll showcase that math can actually be fun and how you can start having fun of your own by taking up mathematical challenges, which will not only make you a better mathematician, but actually help you in overall growth. So um, everyone here, how many of you have a goal and a dream in life? A dream or a goal in life where you would want to probably, let's say, aspire to be a designer, aspire to be a doctor, aspire to be an engineer, aspire to be a coder, aspire to be a politician, a anything. It could be anything. Your aspirations have no limitations. But what I'm saying is that math and numbers prove and actually have historically proven to be a good, decent part of every good career on set. So for us, we can't really run away from the realm of numbers because it's all around us. What do we do? We look around, we look around, we count, we, we make designs, we look at art forms, we look at geometry, we look at, we look at um, the way in which people respond in, in, in times like these right now, we are in the Corona lockdown time. So doctors and, and the entire work on how they've been modeling medicine, every single walk of life demands and demands good understanding towards numbers to certain capacity or the other. So what I want you to say is that the, the way in which I'm going to be talking to you about math is math is an essential life skill. And this is a life skill which we will make friends with because we would not want to run away from it. We would understand it. We would try to look at it saying Ki, you will be a tool which I will be using to unlock the potentials and the things which I have lined up. And actually coming back to it, um, I personally, as I mentioned, Neelakanta Bhanu Prakash, I'm, I'm the fastest human calculator in the world and I'm 20. So I don't think there is a better example for me to tell you guys that doing math just doesn't help you in just doing math. Doing math makes you a better thinker doing math makes you critically analyze a few things quickly and in fact doing quick arithmetic makes you a better decision maker and makes you someone who can use the nitty gritties and the infinite potential of your human brain and that is possible by actually exploring how you do your calculations and in fact this is a very good tool so as I would mention key if you look at this and start off I mean, every one of you, how many of you here actually work out on a daily basis? Do some sort of an exercise. You're a kid, you're, you're let's say in your 10th class, you're having your board exams, probably postponed because of this Corona time or whatever. But I'm sure we all have historically emphasized on the necessity of having a physical exercise, right? A physical exercise to keep your physical body in engagement and healthy. 
in a similar way i have been propagating and fundamentally believe that the reason why i am here today is because i have planned the way in which i work out with my brain every day and when i work out with my brain i use maths and arithmetic as a tool so that it makes me explore a few things which i would not had i been doing anything else so just like how reading is a good habit doing math doing arithmetic and this is the the people who are actually in their 11th and 12th grade who might be looking at this and saying why is bhanu actually suggesting us to do quick math because right now i'm probably doing integration i am probably doing bigger algebraic questions so why is arithmetic important it's because my friend it turns on the computer in your brain and trust me once you have that the way you're going to think and the way in which you're going to creatively approach and solve a real life problem would change entirely so um before i go ahead and do anything let me actually share my screen and um show you guys a small activity which i have in place so um what i have here in front of me is just a small activity which i usually use to train myself and train my brain by i go ahead with my uh, daily practice so uh, what we have here is a couple is a bunch of i think 30 questions of multiplications and i'm going to actually hit up and showcase you about how i do my calculations so there are two reasons why i'm showing you this one is to prove that i am the fastest human calculator because you've taken my word for it i'll show you how that is possible and i'm going to show you how eventually after i do this how does this help you in thinking quickly so let me start this exercise in 3 seconds uh 3 2 1 and yeah 14303538117214301017413045788921310815338345 and 3888 let me actually get here and do this also this is going to be 6498184202512825128 actually i have typed the wrong um thing here 6438 let me get back to this 25855 and so on so uh what we had here is me doing a bunch of calculations very quickly but let me actually um shift this and showcase a couple of quick ways in which you can do your calculations and how this can be a way in which you fundamentally change the way math is learned since we are actually uh, having a one hour stream right now let me actually go ahead and teach you how math can actually be fun and how math can actually be fun without tricks and tips it's just by you understanding how you think and how you use this as a good way to go about and this is for all my friends who are out there and all my uh, friends who are um, just now to pick up a good multiplication you can actually look at this let me share a um, screen um here yeah hopefully i can you can all um, see my um screen here with a good page so what i have here is me showcasing you how to do calculations like this in a jiffy so if you know the answer just type it in the youtube comment section which we have but let me actually guide you and look at this so how do we do it the school routine method let me write it down the routine method of doing this particular calculation how do we do it we take 723 we multiply that by 4 so let me actually draw a small bubble so this is our brain and uh, i'm going to write down all our thoughts of what we do while we do calculations here so first calculation we do a 4 into 3 right if i'm not wrong so do agree with me or disagree with me while we go ahead we write a 2 we take a 1 carry and i'm just repeating our regular method i'm going i'm 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 repeating the regular method in which we do our math and this is been we how we have been taught and this is how everyone around the world has been taught so 4 into 2 is 8 plus 1 
which is 9. All right. So our first thought is 12. Then we removed the 2, wrote the 2 down here. Then we have written a 1 here. And then our second thought was a 9. And then our last thing is this multiplication, which we have in front of us. And then we write a 28. So that's how we got to our answer. If I'm not wrong, right? This is how the regular method works. So if we go ahead and look into another question, which says 7746 multiplied by 6. How do we do this? In our regular school method, we go ahead and multiply this together. We take a 6. We took a 3 here. We multiply 6 by a 4. It's 24 plus 3, which is a 27. We take a 2 here. We multiply this. We get a 42. We add 2 to it. We get a 4. And we can take a 4 again. We multiply 6 by a 7. 42 plus 4. This is how we get to our answer. Right? If I'm if I'm wrong, right, this is how every one of us have been taught how to do it. So now let's actually make this fun. And this is just one out of a million ways in which maths can actually become fun. But this is just a quick example which I would want to give you so that this make this fun. And let us be quick. These are the two objectives we have to make math fun and to this. So let me uh, something which I'll actually open another paper here. The question which we had is 7746 multiplied by 6. So um, let us actually look at this this way. And I'm, I'm, I'll go into the details of why this method works later on because at the end of the day, that's how math works. But um, let's look at this. Um, where do we read from? Let's say if I write, I love math. When I say something like this, when you read this sentence, in which direction do you read from? We read from the left to the right. Simple. We read from the left to the right. Everyone who's watching this, we as English speakers or native English speakers, and in fact, even if you are, let's say, an Arabic speaker or anything of that sort, we are wired to think from left to the right side. So when we are wired to think from left to the right side, uh, we have we been doing calculations from the right to the left? Because here we did this and we did this and our calculations have been from right to the left. So this makes us slow. And this is a boring way because ek hi bar answer likhna hai, that's way more fun than actually doing it this way. So, so let's say that this is the challenge for the day. This is my fun with math for the day. And this is just one out of a million other activities and exercises which we could be doing. So once we say this, what we could be doing is, let's look at this. Hello. Yeah. So um, there was a certain technical glitch from my side, if I'm uh, not correct. So just give me a moment. So where were we? We were actually discussing on how um, we were um, going to take in seven, seven, four, six, and then multiply it by the number six. So when we were 
taking this ahead and when we were looking at this we said that let's actually make sure we try this and make uh, us calculate from the left to the right side so if this is possible then this is going to be something which is going to make our calculations fun so um yeah let's let's actually take this ahead um and try this out so let's multiply 6 by 7 what is 6 multiplied by 7 6 multiplied by 7 is 42 right we are going from the left direction all the way to the right direction so we have 42 let's take the second multiplication 6 multiplied by 7 again what is 6 multiplied by 7 let's actually do this together 42 again let's actually take 6 multiplied by 4 what is 6 multiplied by 4 it's a 24 and then finally let's get to 6 multiplied by 6 so we have basically come from all the way from the left to the right corner 6 multiplied by 6 is a 36 so now since we have had all of these let's introduce something called the step operation let me actually write it down for you in this format so here so what we basically do is we combine the adjacent numbers here we basically add these thing together these things together so what happens when we add these things together this becomes a 4 2 and 4 add up together to get a 6 2 and 2 add up together to get a 4 4 and 3 add up together to get a 7 and the 6 remains so our answer is 46400 Six. So, what did we basically do? Let me actually get this here and explain you why this method or whatever we did here works. And this is what the fun of mathematics is: is to one understand the method, and the next is to understand why it works. So, we had seven, seven, four, and six, and we were multiplying this by six. So, just look at it this way: what we can split this entire question into seven thousand multiplied by six. 700 multiplied by 6 and the kids who are watching this everyone who's watching this if you're if you're if you're under 5th uh, class just start to remember the last time your teacher actually taught you expanded forms and expressing a number as expanded form this is what you were basically doing so you were writing 7746 as a number in this particular format so when you add all of these together that's nothing but this particular answer itself so now let's actually independently write down what what these answers are so this is a 4200 yeah so this is a let me actually get back on this for some reason yes so yeah Yeah. So there is four thousand two hundred forty-two thousand, which is here, which is forty-two thousand six times seven thousand, and then subsequently we have four thousand two hundred, which is seven times this, and then we have two hundred and forty, and lastly we have thirty-six. When we add all of these together, what is this? This looks like a step. The addition which we are doing looks like a step. And once you do this, you get four, six, four, seven, six. And the same question when we looked at our method, what did we do? We just wrote forty-two. We wrote forty-two this way. We wrote another forty-two this way. We wrote twenty-four subsequently, and we wrote thirty-six. subsequently and all of these put together gives us what gives us what we took these two together we took these two together and we took these two together giving us the answer which is here so this is just one way in which we look at our calculations and how we make us ourselves quicker so being quick what is that what is that help us doing being quick helps us to be better thinkers being quick in this calculations makes you visualize things which you have not done before how many of you if you have actually watched sherlock holmes 
or a couple of other cartoon characters if i'm talking about like chacha chaudhary like a few other people you would actually know that these people have something called the mind palace where they use their entire brain to actually imagine and visualize and actually do amazing stuff for you to do it be it you want to be a coder be it you want to be a doctor be it whatever your aspirations are having this prowess over your brain and the ability to think in this way can be encouraged and can be gotten only when you do speed mathematics and here again let me come back to this is when you adapt methods like these let's say the previous method which we took the step method and if we actually look at this here what we personally do is let's say if i start off i say 4988 multiplied by 6 how do i do it i take a 24 i take a 54 i take a 48 and i take a 48 and i visualize all of this in my head all of this in my head all of this in my brain and i train myself to do so and when i actually do this when i when i go ahead and do this that is when i actually go ahead and write down the answer which is 29928 and this is something which is possible only when you start pulling a few ways in which you can visualize things so let me actually pull off a couple of other small um, calculations in front of you so that you understand what it is to be um, the fastest human calculator in the world yes but also understand how you specifically can be can be sort of what do we say making um, the entire exercise of mathematics something which is fun and something which can help you in a daily way so let's actually let me actually take a a couple of things here so um what i have in front of me is a screen a screen where random two digit numbers will be flashed so yahan screen pe aayenge two digit numbers in the span of 0.35 seconds so ek ek number badal jayega 0.35 seconds ke baad and i'm going to be adding all of these in front of you let me actually take and start so that you understand what is what is what i'm doing 623 is the answer yeah there we go so now i'm actually going to do this in front of you um in front of you but this is actually a record which i hold uh, on with, with 300 milliseconds as a as a gap which is 0.3 seconds for every two digit number and i'm going to speak my mind out to show you guys how i think and how you can also think the same very way by adopting and taking up mathematics and numbers as a sport so let's start off and i'm going to be narrating the answer 56 69 135 168 233 297 343 438 519 585 what did i do here sorry let me actually start again yeah 78 118 185 274 344 360 425 454 530 584 yeah so what did i do i'm actually speaking out the intermediate results in my uh, head and in the previous one was wrong because um, one number didn't flash because that usually happens in the beginning but yeah so this is what we we are actually here for we are th this is something which is possible for us to take and let me actually speak to you while i do this 649 and this is something all of us here can do and this makes us really 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 sharp in the way we think and in fact if you want to actually give this a try when you go back today after this is uh, that's that's the reason why i actually brought this up is because i would want you guys to actually the people who are watching this to test how you can actually go ahead and do this and this is a website which we have the exploringinfinities.com there is a section for cognitive ability games so exploringinfinities.com ke andar there is this section which is cognitive ability games and this particular set has all the games which you can play to make yourself really 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 quick in uh, doing your calculations and once you log in you play similar games which sort of make you do so so um i'll actually stop with the demonstrations for now and i'll go ahead and um, talk to you a little more about why and how i think math can influence your career so being scared of math that's something which we always have been math not being interesting that's because we've never looked at math and numbers in a friendly way neither have we tried to realize them in a day to day scenario so when you start looking around you if you start thinking numbers you as a kid i mean imagine you are probably a 10th grade kid right now or or a 10th grade student someone whom i probably would be really great friends with back uh, a few years ago if we actually look at this um we human beings in general are people who love patterns human beings in general are people who love love 
understanding numbers and making sure how um we have a very strategic and a fun way in which we go about if you have gone to a park which had tiles on it with alternate colors or if you have probably walked down the mall corridor where you had tiles of alternate uh, colors you probably walked in the colors of the tiles which are black or white and probably jumped around in such patterns when you were a kid and this is because kids and students and all my friends you are actually watching this and the parents is that we in general when we are young are used to the concept of working in patterns and that is something which we lose out and that is something which i would want you guys to start observing a few takeaways from me which i would definitely say is that when you are probably crossing um taking the car after um this entire lockdown is done probably going in the scooter with your father or mother you should probably try doing some fancy stuff in mathematics in your head because that is when a few observations make you really 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 understand how things are probably count the number of times a car passed you probably count the number of times you've taken steps probably look at the number of patterns which are there while you walk probably probably just look and say that acha this this is where i'll actually try looking for something in mathematics let's let me actually look at this and see if something which i've learned from trigonometry makes sense here something which i do there so having real life experiments which i personally at exploring infinities is a firm which i had so here we have actually started making math fun and we started making math fun by making kids understand and students understand and all of your friends here to start sort of start looking at things around you you know rather a different way so let's say i have 10 fingers um so i count right so why does the number 10 after 9 10 come after 9 so why can't there be another symbol why did we repeat numbers after every 10 numbers why do we have the decimal system in place when we start wondering like this you realize that the reason we why, why we have a decimal system is because we have 10 fingers at least a lot of us do we have 10 fingers so for the old age man it was easier for 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 people in the, back in stone age it was easier for them to understand 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 so what if there is an alien species which has only five fingers which has only three fingers on this two fingers on this how would their system be how would the calculations there be wondering things like these and making these exercises will actually make you explore the realm of mathematics and this is more relevant than ever because in the growing world where data analytics um artificial intelligence computer science all of these bigger bigger aspirations if you look at it and you look at any big mathematician or any big computer scientist actually talking to you he would tell you for sure a designer a web designer let's say a doctor a biotechnologist a politician let's say someone who's creating policy a nias officer these people will tell you that the world tomorrow is being driven by numbers the way we are actually talking on this youtube stream right now is the work of a millions of numbers working on the back end of some server somewhere so to understand and be a prime runner in this in the days to come we should start loving mathematics and uh, and what better day than today to actually start off by looking at dilakan tavanu prakash who's probably just someone like you someone who's had a very similar walk of life and telling you guys that we can actually change the way we look at numbers and eradicate math phobia because the, the being scared of numbers doesn't really make sense because it's a part of you it's a part of me and let's not be scared of numbers let's start exploring them and um, that is what i would want to say for now and in fact let me actually have a have a friend of yours join in to this session um who probably will be doing um um a few things which with of speed calculations so that you can actually see being uh, being in speed mathematics and how being quick is feeling like and you can probably also test the fastest human calculator as he claims himself to be so that um we can actually have an experience and have some fun together by doing a few mathematics tricks hello drumil this is neelan tabhanu prakash here hope you're doing well yes how's your day what how's your day how are you doing fine yeah so drumil um you're in 12th class is it yes yeah welcome on board uh, first of all thanks a lot for joining in and volunteering for um setting a few challenges and tasks up so um 
so it'll be great if you can actually uh, have a calculator with you if you can show it around onto the screen that will be really great so that a calculator or let's say even a, yeah that's that's fantastic so um, if if we have that we can actually start off and we can start off by um, actually getting some things which are small so um dhrumil what i would want you to do is throw two digit numbers at me one after the other and once you say a two digit number i'll say plus and you say a two digit number again i'll say plus and we'll go back and forth if that is okay so until i say so, so you can start off yeah dhrumil start 68 plus 95 and you do keep uh, let's start again do keep a check of this on your calculator how you do this so start 59 59 plus 67 plus 29 plus 64 plus 34 plus 68 plus 58 plus 31 plus 97 plus 54 all right the answer let's have one more let's have one more let's have one more actually yeah 34 Yeah, the answer is five ninety five. Yeah. If you have not missed it, what is the answer? Five ninety five. Correct. Yeah. Can you show it? So probably turn turn around the calculator here so that everyone else probably can see. Uh, a little ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should be fine. Yeah. All right. Um, let's actually get a little um deeper into this. Let's actually have you you probably plug in a. big number let's actually take a seven digit number um just just tell it out out loud yeah Sixty-nine lakhs eighty-seven thousand five forty two. now give me a single digit number something between 2 and 9 make it harder for me take give seven. me seven right so uh, multiply them together and i'm going to tell you the answer straight away All right. If do you have the answer yet? Yes. Yeah. The answer is four um, crore eighty eight lakh eighty nine lakh um, five thousand seven hundred and ninety four. I got twelve thousand. Let me actually put it back to you. This, the question is sixty nine lakh eighty seven thousand five forty two, and the answer is four crore eighty. Eight eighty nine lakh um, twelve thousand yeah twelve thousand seven hundred and ninety four. Let's actually have one more. Let's let's actually get uh, and beat your calculator. Let's actually get ten digits on board. Uh, give me a ten digit number. Nine eight five four two six three one one two. Nine eight five four two six three one one two. Yeah, so that number would be nine hundred and eighty-five crore forty-two lakh sixty-three thousand one twelve. All right, give me another single-digit number which you have, probably eight. Eight. So multiply them together to get, and I'll not go ahead with the time and the, with the place values because I'll just go on the number is seven eight eight uh, three four one zero four eight nine six. The calculator does not show the whole answer. Yeah. Okay. That proves the point. All right. Uh, all right. Let's actually. Um, yeah. Anyway, that would be the same. Well, what does it show though? It, it does it show an exponent? Exponent. Yes. All right. All right. Okay. So um, what we'll do is probably just then take the same number and then do a division because then the calculator must show. So take nine nine eight five four two six three one 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 two three one one two. Sorry. Yeah. And. Uh, Give me a give me a two digit or give me a single digit number for now. Let's actually not make this a little yeah. Six. Six. So divide that by six, and the answer which you should be getting is one six four two three seven seven zero one eight five point three 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 three. It is not a decimal. It is divisible. It is. The answer is one six four two three seven 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 one eight five point three three three. What what is the question? What is the question which you have in in, in your hand? Let's actually get that one nine eight five four two six seven 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 one eight five point three 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 three. 
फोर टू सिक्स थ्री वन वन टू All right, I think I have a three one zero two here. All right, never mind. Actually, let's actually push it um, um, to another um, section. Um, what we'll do here is, um, um, Dhrumil, give me a two-digit number. Let's actually take a two-digit number. And what you have to do is to keep adding the same number to itself as quickly as you can. All right, and uh, I'll do the same. So basically, you can press equals, equals, equals also on your on your calculator once you. Press in, let's say eighty-seven plus eighty-seven, and then you can press equals, 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 and then I'll try racing past you while we do that. All right, L- give me the two-digit number. Any two-digit number is fine. Uh, in fact, you can give me a three-digit also. But yeah, whatever, whatever works. Eighty-four. Eighty-four. So I'll start off. Eighty-four plus eight. So what I'm doing, guys, people who are watching this, is eighty-four plus eighty-four plus eighty-four, and I'm going to go ahead. Eighty-four, one sixty-eight, two fifty-two, three thirty-six, four twenty, five not four, five eighty-eight, six seventy-two, seven fifty-six, eight forty, nine twenty-four, thousand eight, thousand ninety-two, one one seven six, one two six zero, one three four four, one four two eight, one five one two, one five nine six, one six six zero, one seven six four, one eight four eight, one nine three two two zero, one six two one zero zero, two one eight four two two six eight, two three five two two four three six two five two zero, two six zero four two six eight eight two seven seven two two eight five six two nine four zero, three zero two four three one zero eight three one nine two three two seven six three three six zero, three four 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 three five two eight three six one two, three six nine six. Three seven eight three seven eight zero three eight six four three nine four eight four zero three two four one one six four two double zero. That's fifty times. Yeah. So just to just a quick, where, where where did you come till? Where did you go till? Fourteen thousand four forty eight. Did you actually um, press the equals? All right, that's great. So we are at four thousand two hundred. Bring a point that we can actually be doing this. And in fact, let's actually go ahead and um, make this one step ahead. and um, see what we can actually um, do when we um let's say let's say pick a relatively uh, bigger uh, number let's 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 actually take a four digit number ank um dhrumel 69000 ne 6945 6945 all right so dhrumel let's actually uh, have another um, let's say A two-digit number um, here. Thirty-two. Give me another two-digit number. Fifty-three. All right. So what we're going to be doing is that we're going to start off at six nine three five, six thousand nine hundred thirty five, forty-five, six thousand nine hundred forty-five, and I'm going to alternatively add thirty-two and fifty-three. So it's basically going to be six nine four five plus thirty-two plus fifty-three plus thirty-two plus fifty-three plus thirty-two. and we're going to go back and forth so here you might not have your little trick of pressing equals to again so you actually have to put it in so 6945 6977 7030 7060 7114 7220 7224 7225 7314 7725 7726257757 7727 7728 7729 7730 7731 7732 7733 7734 7735 7736 7737 7738 7739 7738 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7739 7
would it be the same if we just travel the one kilometer or should we actually run it we should run through the one kilometer right so we can't use a scooter to go for the same one kilometer so using abacus is something like that so you're getting the answers done but you're not necessarily training your brain to do better off so i probably and fundamentally believe that um doing the calculations the routine way and doing them with a slight flavor makes you do mental exercises and and that that and in fact i mean it's it's definitely a better um, uh, way to do it than the regular but sometimes it's good to work out rather than uh, do this so so anandi couple of things if you're already someone who's doing a back is great but try doing some things which are not be not something which you can do in a back is square roots you can't divisions not very easy so take these up as challenges because this is where the real real learning begins um irtidio i told you step multiplication um we can do it for division it's a little tricky to do that right now because it takes a little while for uh um for me to do that because it is going to take a little while so um if see what you can do is that you can follow the fastest human calculator on instagram at the rate fastest human calculator and the youtube channel of mine which is nilakanta bhanu where um these things are being posted so that you can actually sort of um look at look at uh, this and the certain ways in which you can do it so irthi what i would say is go follow um, this and in fact let me actually um, showcase um, you um, a thing right out of um, right out of my head right now so um, yeah should be a good way um, is is this let me actually share my screen so here um, we have this nilakanta bhanu bhanu prakash the number prodigy and here's a list of uh, videos which i uh, personally have been posting so you can actually go ahead and watch these so here we have a list so you can actually go ahead and subscribe and watch them from here so it will be a uh, relatively tricky to actually get that here right now so um let me look at the next question yeah so um aryan Aryan um, asks to showcase an alternate method for step method. Uh, all right, let's actually get to the whiteboard here uh, because this is not repetitive. So let me actually get here and showcase. Give me a moment. Pardon me, I was uh, yeah. So um, if we have a question which is three, seven, nine. Eight multiplied by say uh, five. What we do in the step method is first write fifteen, thirty-five, forty-five, and forty. So it's as simple as this. So we basically wrote all the multiplications with five from the left to the right corner. So we we took fifteen. Thirty-five, forty-five, and forty. So the step method basically says and asks you to sort of um, add things which are adjacent to each other, which is this, this, and this. So once you do that, one and five together, what does this become? This becomes an eight. Five and four together becomes a nine. Five and four together becomes a nine again, and the zero remains. So the answer is one eight nine nine zero. so that is how we uh, do our um, calculation all right so um, the next question which we have is um, from lata jain to tell us the trick so um, ma'am um, the thing is that the tricks and the tips which are involved in math here and the calculations which we do are not necessarily some methods and methodologies which you read out of let's say a vedic math book so the tricks are practice and ways of visualizing the same question in multiple ways so uh, if you look at this math is also an art so looking at this art the strokes the sort of um, nibs and the pens we use is all great yes but the end, the end it's the artist so the trick we use is to actually enable us to think quicker and we use multiple ways to do so the step method which i've told you is just one out of a million other ways in which we can actually do this um let's have the next question we have brijesh um so we're asking us 
how do you train how do i train my mind can i share a few tricks absolutely so how do i train my brain my brain is by doing a certain daily exercises for arithmetic so if i actually show you guys let's say my uh, um daily sheet i have let's say a set of things which i take up on a daily basis let me actually share my screen and show you guys uh what i do just give me a moment for the same so um just a moment yeah all right so um i hope you can see my screen here right now so uh what we have here is something which i've showed you previously is uh to show and add let's say a two digit numbers that's me actually when i um yeah so just a second um can I, can you see my uh, sort of let's say the the screen which which is here can you see my screen if yes just give me a heads up on that yeah so if you can see the screen which i have here so here uh, what i'm doing is i am sort of um, taking multiple numbers so this is how i practice let's say if my practice for today is to is to increase my visual sensory precision so when i talk about it um let me actually come back and tell you guys that speed math helps you develop cognitive abilities and cognitive skills cognitive skills include your sensory precision your ability to compute your memory your iterative memory your long term memory and things of these sorts so when you have to build these right when you build these this make you better off so cognitive ability development is an outcome of arithmetic training and this is something our firm exploring infinities uh, fundamentally believes in so um, if you want your kid to actually be better off at math he is he or she is not just being better off in math but is being a better cognitive uh is 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 actually leading to a better cognitive development of this particular child so they have better memory they have better sensory understanding better ways to multitask better ways to multi make decisions and things of these sorts so let me actually put a small exercise of mine in front of you where i have a lot of numbers which are going to be coming on the screen i'm going to be adding them these are three digit numbers so when i look at these so these are ways in which i go about my practice let's say can i remember these questions can i do my calculations let me actually start off so let me add all of these which are coming on the screen Three, four, two, four, and yeah so let me start it again so what we could do is 390 plus 1253 2185 2313 2688 Three one three six, three one five zero, four four eight four. So now, when you understand this, we actually take this sort of an approach where we, I, but personally, look at the places in which I can do my calculations in eight sixty three, nine ninety three thousand one, one nine seven one, two two five three, two three nine zero, is my answer. So when I do this. i sort of train myself in doing this and this is just one way there are multiple cognitive parameters so if i actually uh, let's say open my deck of cards which i have in front of me so let me actually do this i was not planning on this but i have it right on my desk so so let me actually do this so let me i have a set of 10 cards in front of me so what i do i just look at these and try to remember them in this format so there is five of spades three of spades four of uh, diamonds five of diamonds three of hearts and four of spades again so i'll put this ahead and i'll actually try reproducing the same thing and this is how you train your memory your short term memory your iterative memory and your ability ability to sort of look at things like these and these are things which will help you uh, eventually in doing a lot of other things the next question which we have is from revathi ma'am herself uh, how can teachers help gifted children realize their gift for numbers so ma'am i personally think that um um understanding an inclination toward a kid uh, a kid's inclination towards arithmetic should happen quite early and if it's great if it happens quite early because kids actually are phenomenal when it comes to understanding numbers i mean all the parents who are watching this also if your kid is around 10 5 to 10 years old it's amazing so i mean the amount of uh, learning and capabilities they have in the human brain is amazing so to understand this you probably set up a few exercises you make them a try and ponder upon things so just like how we take up cricket we take up football taking up mental math as a sport is something which i am promoting with the firm which i head is to make this a sport because at the end of the day we need some people to actually take this as a front runner because this is developing 
human beings in a direction which we have not been as developed in in the recent past. So uh, a teacher can help their gifted students realize their gift for numbers by giving them a chance to actually explore what a very good way of calculating or very good way of understanding this is. And a slight inclination towards numbers and interest and being acquainted with, with let's say, people like me who have been sort of um, uh, working in this field would actually inspire them and make them look forward to this. So, so yeah, teachers has, should be constantly on a lookout. And I personally believe that every child is gifted in his own way in mathematics and numbers. Some might be in numbers, some might be in geometry, some might be in spatial visualization, and some might be in abstract numbers. So abstract, abstract mathematics. We all are, and we have to understand this by looking and keeping our uh, teacher senses open and see how they can be doing and how, how they can be doing better. Um, and how we can actually set a few exercises for them on a daily basis, which we as Exploring Infinities do by helping a lot of teachers to do so, by giving them exercises, by giving them tasks, by giving them things and funds and games and keeping them engaged there. Um, Runa Deshmukh's question is, um, will these magic works work on uh, some learning disability children? Like this calculia. So, ma'am, in fact, um, in fact, um, we actually do this. So, we work with a lot of kids who have been diagnosed with this calculia because um, the way in which math is taught, this calculia, if you know, is a is a is a um, is a condition which kids are diagnosed with when they don't have a sensory understanding or a visual understanding towards what numbers are. So, there are alternate numbers of math systems which we usually try to teach these kids. And um, these come in other formats, pictor pictorial representations of numbers and quantities, multiplying by using graphs and diagrams, multiplying by looking out at more parameters other than linguistics. So the now uh, cognitive ability and cognitive development of a child is very much related to the numerical development of a child. So these are very, very uh, close quarters. Cognition is the way in which someone learns and the way in which someone, a kid actually visualizes and becomes a learner. So this has a very, very fundamental link towards what and how uh, numeracy and numeral understand, numerical understanding works. So um, yeah, it, this is a place which Exploring Infinities and myself have been extensively working on. In fact, we have a couple of publications also, research publications also in the pipeline, which talks about how we can use a certific special arithmetic games to actually get people and kids help help them out of this calculia. Lavanya. Uh, Lavanya Vasu has a question which says, what made me run my brain so speedily yet accurately? So, uh, all right. Uh, um, how do I calculate speedily and accurately? So, speed and accuracy are the two fundamental important pillars of your calculation, right? So, being quick is great, but being accurate is more important. So, so it's a fundamental trade-off. So we basically look at how we do our calculations and how we go ahead and uh, do this with, let's say, let's, let me actually share my screen again and show you guys uh, how that works. So let's say in the screen, which is in front of you here, I'm doing my calculations and the set of additions, which I have. So when I, when I increase, let's say the number of numbers, which I'm taking of, let's say three digit numbers to let's say seven or let's say, let's say I'm taking four digit numbers and I'm probably taking uh, four, four digit numbers and I'm going to add them. So if this is my objective, I'm going to add these. Two, two, five, four, six. So yes. So six to zero one plus 14193 five, five. Right. So here what we did is I've increased the speed and increased the quantum of the size. I have taken one chance to sort of set my brain to see if I'm able to do that. I zone in. And the second question, I go ahead and hit it head on. So the fundamental trade-off between accuracy and um let's say speed can be found out and can be uh, exploited by 
thinking quick and at the same time uh, thinking accurately and and this is possible by only sort of creating diversions let's say i the next time i'm going to probably practice this if i get this wrong this time is by being more focused and once i get it right i'm going to reduce this this time and then see where i go wrong again and then i practice at that time interval and this is just addition so that's how you do it you create a strong fundamental structure in which you go about this so uh, that's how i do i think speedily and accurately in fact being more conscious about your calculations make you wrong so the power of your subconscious brain is immense right so let's say the way in you you dream the creative ability you have when you dream the sort of um things you work on in your subconscious mind is is fantastic so you leave your calculations to the subconscious mind and you get your answers very quickly so you sort of have this in the background you're probably thinking i'm probably thinking about talking to you guys right now but i'm probably humming the table of 243 on the background so i'll probably go ahead and say 243 but i'm probably just thinking about what the next question is the next question is ashwi agarwal's so um, having these two activities together which is the ability to parallel think makes you think accurately because your brain works better off when there is a distraction and this is something which i not want to elaborate a lot on i have a lot of lectures on this you can actually go ahead and look into but yeah um, we have um, we have a uh, sangeeta question some tricks to help students who are weak in math the first thing to help kids who are in weak in math is to make math interesting for them that's the first step the step 2 is to make them understand uh, how they do the entire um, calculation around this um, thing so a few tricks they are all posted on my youtube channel a few ways to go about this is to fundamentally start realizing and understanding number systems i'll not go into a little depth of it because um a few uh, each trick takes each i'll not call them a trick i'll call them a method because trick is something which makes it easy my method is something which gives you proper understanding so um i'll take the last question here and then probably move on um uh to this so akanchi somani actually asked me a question which is related to the method which you have told if the sum of the middle terms come to a two comes to a two digit number the one carries on to the previous number the one carries on to the previous number so um so let's say if you are if you if you have a 2 5 and step 5 5 step 5 is a 10 and the one goes to a 2 if that makes sense um that is what we are going to do yes i think that that will be the last question which i take i think we can hand over to um to ya yeah, to vijayanti ma'am probably if if he's here yeah but that's pretty much about it so the, what you should be doing is doing these calculations and doing these real quick and actually make a fun exercise out of all of these just like how you play your catches when you're when you're let's say when you're playing your cricket match you probably do this by probably hitting the ball onto your onto your, onto your background balcony that's how you do it you, you you play around with the numbers and that's how you do it yeah yeah ma'am ma'am's back hello taking us through that wonderful whirlwind session two things i'm definitely taking back home one that maths is not really that difficult yeah it's all about counting yes, that monster and that sphere within yes one thing to try the subject yeah and second thing it's not really that difficult to focus and set your mind to it all you need is focus and practice and thank you so much for explaining that method i'm sure most of us will really use it and practice it before going just a little thing that i would like you to share with us how did the world record come about a little very quick bit about that sure mom so um, i mean it's it's actually quite funny on how the world record panned out because um i was actually in my 10th grade when i finished my 10th class um uh, somewhere around that time when i was giving my sa1 and the sa2s and the other examinations um um i was actually the international speed arithmetic champion so i went ahead and won this competition in singapore and when i came back i attended this family function in this family function someone comes up to me and says bhanu you're you're the international champion right so um why don't you try world records and until then it never occurred to me in fact because because it never occurred that we actually could be competing with the world's best at some point historical point because i was little too focused in the competition so when i go back i actually mail um mail limka book and a couple of other book records by looking at past records which were held by people like shakuntala devi and people like cot flansburg very very big people 
these are these are 50 40 year olds and in fact chakudala the ma'am is not no longer with us uh, but but very 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 big people in the industry so um i was like okay let's give this a try and then i mail back uh, limka book records and they mail back saying that acha you want to give a try and i say that i want to try for seven records at the same time and they're like sure are you sure send us a video and then i do that and in the next two months i actually have the record so it's more of a surreal feeling when you actually go ahead and do this in the next few years i actually hit 50 limka records and four world records and when that happened um i think i think there's one answer is that it felt surreal it felt great it felt phenomenal but at the same time it it felt um in such a way where let's say i'm a 15 year old i got a world record what else do i have to offer to the community of mathematicians and people at large so so that's when my quest towards teaching people started so i think that that's probably uh, the one big takeaway which i would say has impacted world record in the long in the large sense a responsibility to to change that's an interesting point that you're making you win something that win itself the success itself kind of becomes an inspiration to try more and do more absolutely and i would like to thank you wholeheartedly on behalf of all the viewers singhania school and the principal mr revati shrinivasan thank you so much for being here and a lot. in this session thanks a lot thanks a lot it's been a good session and yeah looking forward to more I have a lot of fun yeah and to all the viewers here i do hope you had an amazing session today go home and break that glass barrier get out of your skin don't be scared anymore and let's try our hand at math after all nothing is impossible and before i sign off i would like to introduce our guest for the next session mrs ketki gadre an educationalist a psychologist a counselor and a researcher she will be sharing her thoughts on how you manage uncertainty in times of a pandemic we have been surrounded by uncertainty so this is another session which will be an absolute eye opener and a must for all of us and on that note thank you for being here and watching us catch you live in the next session until then take very good care of yourself and stay safe and before you sign off remember to subscribe and that little bell icon please do click on it and so you get reminders whenever we go live and on that note take care of yourself and stay safe